Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Melissa and um, I'm a homeschool mom of three kiddos. And today I'm doing something I haven't done before, but I really enjoy watching these on some of my other um, favorite YouTubers channels. And that is a day in life, but we're doing just a homeschool version. So I'm not like showing you our entire day, um, but like our homeschool um, sort of schedule. It's not like this. Um, it's not exactly like this every day because we kind of, um, sorry, the camera's really shaky. We, um, it's not like this every day because we're pretty flexible, but having been, um, a teacher in traditional school for 17 years, I tend to really like a schedule. So we do sort of have a schedule, but I have been able to, um, relax my OCD self enough that we don't like, I mean, I'm not like looking at my clock going, okay, this block is over. We got to move to the next block. Um, but, um, it is generally pretty much the same every day. Now it changes here and there. Um, and we change like where we sit and what we're working on. And like some days I'm really involved in the big kids work. And some days I'm not as involved because I like to see, you know, um, that they can do things independently without having to be poked and prodded along the way. Um, this is our first year homeschooling. So this is very, very different from my big kids. They went to traditional school all the way from the beginning through sixth grade. So they were very ingrained, um, in that style of schooling. And so this feels really different for them. And I think, um, in a way, it's kind of hard for them to take it seriously. It has a really loud car driving by. Really loud. Anyway, um, I think it's a little bit difficult for them to take it seriously sometimes just because it just doesn't feel like school or what they have always known as school. Um, now, I we were at a private school and so I was their music teacher. I taught music and theater. <laughs> and so I was their music teacher for a good portion of that time. So me being their teacher is not completely foreign to them. Although I never taught core subjects to them before until now, I, I was just their music and theater teacher. So I was like the fun teacher. <laughs> but um, anyway, so it's a little bit of a change. Um, well, not a little bit, it's a huge change for them. Um, but it's been a really, really good one and we love it so we're you know we're halfway through our first year homeschooling and so here is kind of a little bit what our schooling day looks like so obviously coffee is extremely important so that's where we begin So after breakfast and of course coffee, the first thing we do is the little one and I sit at the kitchen table and we do his language arts and then we follow that directly with math. Now it's kind of a little bit of a long block, especially for such a little one, but I just find that this works better for him. And then he's pretty much done with school at that point because that's really the main subjects I do with him. Now he listens in and does some few, a few activities with us in science and history. Um, and we have some read alouds that we do later in the day that he participates in too. But this is really the bulk of his work in the morning. And then while we are doing that, um, my big two are doing independent work. Brooks, my oldest, is in his room and he is practicing his viola during this time. And then Liv is on her computer doing her math. We use teaching textbooks, which um, is online, and she does that completely independently. She has not needed any help with any of it this year so far it grades it for you and everything so later on in the day i usually check back 
um, on her lesson for that day just to make sure she passed and did well. Um, and like I said, she has never needed my help thus far. So um, she, she can do her math completely, completely independently, which is nice. So for Ford um, language arts and math, I am using both subjects. Um, I am using the good and the beautiful um, kindergarten levels with him. And um, so we are pretty much, it's I, both of those are pretty much an open and go curriculum, which I love because I feel like I have to spend so much time with my older ones. Um, and so it's nice that I don't have a, a lot or really any prep work with him. Now I do, um, I love Teachers Pay Teachers and so there are times um, and there's some, you know, obviously free resources out there as well and so sometimes I use things like that and just print things off. I have a nice printer at home so I can print. Um, and then he has some educational games on his tablet and things like that. So he does, he does other things other than just um, the language arts and the math curriculums from the good and the beautiful. Um, he likes reading eggs and so he spends some time on that sometimes. Um, he has fun games that he plays that are educational. So he's kind of all over the place all day long um, when I'm not working with him. He's, he's usually doing something um, else school related but it's just on his own and it's not actual you know book work or written work or curriculum um, specifically curriculum based but he loves the the good and the beautiful um, curriculum quite a bit and so do I <laughs> check it out So one thing that I didn't film is what generally happens right after Ford and I are finished with his um, language arts and his math. Generally that by that time, Olivia has finished her math and Brooks has finished his viola. And so Ford will generally scoot off and find another activity that he can do independently. And the big kids will grab their grammar and bring it into the table. And the three of us actually do that together and out loud. Now, one thing that's kind of weird about us and our homeschooling this year is because my kids um, came from traditional school, a private school. They had gone to traditional private school all the way through sixth grade. And then this year is our first year homeschooling. And because of that, I really didn't feel like I had a good idea of what they knew and didn't know. And I also knew that they were behind on some things, um, especially my oldest who has kind of struggled um, in school. And so we really spent the first half of the year rather than, you know, just jumping right on into to, um, seventh, quote unquote, seventh grade curriculum. Um, we really did a whole conglomeration of things because I just really wanted to um, get a firm grasp on what they know, what they don't know, what they needed help with, what they were, um, behind on so to speak and try to catch them up a little bit so um the big kids are doing the seventh grade grammar from bju press now it's the grammar and writing curriculum and shockingly they really enjoy it they um they prefer me to do the work with them and to read it with them and 
Um, they like us to do things together. And so I try to do as much with them um, as I can. So that's generally um, what we do right after Ford and I are done. Um, and then from there, we move on. Usually, um, this is new for this semester. We just started a co-op. I did not want to do a co-op our very first semester because I just felt like we were, we were changing our lives and our schooling um, situation so drastically that I felt like we just needed some time to figure out what that was going to be like at home before we started to add anything else. But I realized um, my original plan was to start a co-op next year, but I realized my big one, my big kids especially, were sort of missing seeing friends because they were so used to that. And so um, we decided to go ahead and join co-op this semester, which means the big kids now have um, a civics class that they're taking at co-op. So they have prep every week to do for that. So generally um, when we get done with grammar, we um, head right on in to prep in for co-op classes. They're taking a science class there as well, and so we try to do that together. Next. So here we are working on civics. Um, we kind of change this around a little bit every time. They really love for me to read to them. Like I said, they're not big readers. And so we will kind of, um, we alternate between them popcorn reading by paragraph. And then sometimes I'll just grab the book and I'll just read to them and we stop and discuss as we go. and. Um, I interject and ask opinions and ask comprehension questions and that sort of thing to make sure that, you know, they're comprehending what they're reading. <laughs> Plus, we are really enjoying the civics class. Brooks is in Civil Air Patrol and so he's very interested in the military and um, our country and all of those types of things and these lessons we were working on this day actually were specifically about the military and there was even a section in the text about Civil Air Patrol, which made Brooks really excited, of course. So if you're interested in what curriculum this actually is, it is from Not Grass, which is my absolute, loop, oh, I can't talk, my absolute favorite um, history social studies curriculum that I've found thus far. Now this year for our own regular history, we are using the good and the beautiful, which I also love. Um, but I really like not grass, especially for the older, um, older grades. So I think we're going to probably stick with not grass from, from here on out. So by this time, we've usually finished most of our core subjects and it's lunchtime. Now we do have a unique situation. So I feel like in this particular portion of today's video, I need to sort of explain what's going on because I do not feed my children those TV dinners that you see, and I do not feed them ramen noodles, which you're about to see also. So let me explain. I'm actually divorced and remarried and my older two children are from my first marriage and we have a um, <clears throat> unconventional, I guess you would say, um, living arrangement because they actually live with their dad every, um, seven day for seven days. And then they live with us for seven days and then their dad for seven days and us. And I know that sounds crazy, but it works really well for us. Their dad lives really close to us. Like it's like a, seriously a five minute drive. And, um, so on the weeks that they are with him, 
he brings them to my house and drops them off in the morning for school, just like he used to take them to their traditional school and drop them off and pick them up at the end of the day, at the end of the school day. So that's exactly what we do on his weeks. Um, he drops them off usually about eight o'clock in the morning and then um, he comes and picks them up after school is over or after he's done with work, whichever happens um, to come. I guess it's not necessarily which one comes first, but whatever just works best for all of us that day. He um, has technically a nine to five job, but a lot of times he's done before five. So if he's done early, sometimes he gets some by three. Um, sometimes, um, he doesn't, sometimes it's five or five thirty before he gets them. If he has a late work meeting or something like that. Um, but we work really well together. Um, and it works really, really well for us. I know some people might think that's crazy. Um, but he was on board with the homeschooling idea. And so in order to make that work, that's just how we had to, um, to arrange our weeks. And so <clears throat> that said, um, on his weeks, they pack a lunch, um, and bring it with them to my house because otherwise they'd eat me out of house and home. <laughs> and so their dad does provide their lunches on the days that, um, they're coming from his house. And then I provide their lunches on the weeks that they're actually living at my house. Again, I know that sounds crazy, but, um, that was just the arrangement we made and it's working for us. So generally during lunch, um, <clears throat> it can go one of two ways. Today, um, we just sort of chatted and talked about whatever. I don't know if you can see it very well, but right outside our bay window, there is a bird feeder and we absolutely love bird watching. Um, they can name just about every bird um, that comes to our feeder by appearance. My grandfather was a big bird watcher and as a kid, um, I used to spend hours upon hours bird watching with him, believe it or not. So I have a lot of bird knowledge in my brain and, um, we just love it. We also have a family of wrens that are nesting in our backyard and we have a family of house finches that have been nesting in our, on our front porch for the entire three years we've lived in this house so far. So we love birds. We love nature. We also have a crazy squirrel who, um, entertains us quite a bit. <clears throat> I think the squirrel actually made an appearance at some point in this video. Um, maybe you can, um, I spy this crazy squirrel. So the squirrel entertains us quite a bit trying to steal our bird seed, but it's a squirrel proof feeder. And thus far, crazy squirrel has not figured out how to actually get bird seed. She can get up on the feeder, but she can't actually get bird seed. <laughs> anyway, we like watching her. So generally after lunch, we will, um, head to the living room and, um, we will do whatever happens to be left for that day. Generally, um, it's a, some read aloud time. Right now we're reading The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom, um, which is a true story about a Dutch family who, um, helped hide Jews during, um, that time. And, um, it is, like I said, it's a true story. It's one of my favorite books I ever have read in my life. It's just a beautiful um, story. And if you haven't read it, I highly encourage you to read it. <clears throat> it is, you know, Holocaust. Um, what am I trying to say? Um, it's a, it's a hard, you know, a hard topic. So Ford doesn't really listen to this with us. Um, he probably could, and he'd be fine. It's not, there's nothing inappropriate, but obviously there is death. Um, and so, um, be careful, um, about reading this without reading this to your children, without reading it by yourself first, just, um, just to make sure that you feel like it's appropriate for your children. <clears throat> But anyway, and then this is also the time in the afternoons we'll do our, um, the Getting the Beautiful History, which we all do together for Does With Us. We also do, um, Apologia's, um, seventh grade science, um, which is general science this year. I love their science. The kids love their science. Um, and so whatever we didn't finish that morning, 
Um, generally, this is when we finish it. And also, at the very end of the day, usually, I do Brooks math with him. And we just started this semester this first book in the seventh grade um, master books principles of math curriculum he's really behind on math and so it's really well done and reviews and we love it so that's what our afternoon looks like okay well there you go so that didn't go exactly as planned and i did not film everything that we did today in school Hey, Bobby. Um, anyway, we just finished dinner. And I snuck away <laughs> to film this really quick. Um, but if you want to know a little bit more about what's going on with us, like especially if you're a... Um, new homeschooler too, maybe with older kids that have been used to traditional school and want a little more info about what we're doing, like what curriculums we're using and why and what we've done for semester versus this semester and why things look a little weird. Um, like while we're at the beginning of some textbooks, but we're in January. <laughs> um, I can do a video on that if you'd like to know so post in the comments if you're interested in any of that info or if you have questions about anything else i'm a pretty open book i'm pretty straightforward i will pretty much tell you um almost anything within reason so um yeah so let me know what you think let me know um if you have any tips yourself for kids who started homeschooling later in life um like i said before it is a huge change and i get that so i'm trying to be patient and we sort of eased into homeschooling if you will for a semester so now we're kind of taking it um we're getting a little more serious digging a little deeper not that it wasn't serious before but um we didn't have quite as heavy of a load with my big kids the first semester as we do now. Anyway, so there you have it. I'm tired and I have to get up really early tomorrow, like before the sun. So I'm about to go to bed. <laughs> but, and it's not even that late. I mean, Ford's still like, I'm not really like about to go to bed, but like right, like I'm not going right this second. But it won't be too much longer. Um, and now I have to go put him to bed. Get him ready. All that good stuff. So, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And subscribe to my channel. And let me know in the comments. Um, ideas that you have for... See, I'm so tired my brain won't even form a complete sentence in a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say is please let me know if you have any wonderful hacks for helping students, middle schoolers especially, who are used to traditional school um, transition into the homeschool life because it's not, it's different, it's different. We'll just leave it at that. Okay. Anyway, see you next week. Bye.